Hello. I'm going to tell you a, oh, let me see how this works. I'm going to tell you a true story about the doctor that saved my life. And my goal here today is to get you so inspired that you're going to want to pitch as strongly as possible whole food plant-based nutrition to every person who walks in your office. And I want you to let me know at the end if I succeed. I'm going to talk about what and how, and then Dr. Preeti, the doctor who saved my life, is going to come up and talk about why and what happened. So here we go. This is supposed to be the advance. <laughs> oh, OK. So the first picture on the left is me at age 16 with my high school sweetheart. And her name is Jay. And this was at our junior prom. And do you like that rock star hair? That was really popular in 1976 when this photo was taken. The photo on the left, pardon me, the photo on the left is me in the US Army about six months later uh, smoking a cigarette in front of a no smoking sign in my barracks. <laughs> I didn't follow instructions very well. Um, a really funny story, when I got all that beautiful hair cut off, I, I sat down in the chair in the barber on my first day in the Army, and he said, would you like to keep that hair? And I said, yes. So he cut it all off and he said, here, keep it. <laughs> this is next. This is me at age 50, uh, 340 pounds on 200 units of insulin a day, 15 medications, including three antidepressants and uh, high blood pressure medication statins and uh, medications intended to mitigate the side effects of other medications. It was, I was really a walking chemical cocktail. I was absolutely miserable. Uh, to walk 100 yards or to stand for an hour, I had to stack Tylenol and Advil and OxyContin. I mean, it was just, it was really, I, I was out of breath tying my shoes. My life was miserable. My fingers and my hands felt like they were tingling all the time. It felt like somebody was pushing fi uh, pins into the soles of my feet from the neuropathy. So life was really difficult and it was unpleasant and it wasn't fun at all. And I continued like this and I went from doctor to doctor to try to find a solution to this. And every time that I went to a doctor, I found a common uh, uh, scene, and that was about a five-minute appointment with a doctor speaking to me, holding a prescription pad in one hand and a pen in the other, and what I assumed was listening for the thing that I was complaining about the most loudly that day. So then he would either write a prescription or adjust my prescriptions to try to uh, uh, help me with my situation. And I went from doctor to doctor over a period I was morbidly obese for about 25 years, and I just kept wondering, what can I do? Uh, how can this be better? What can I possibly do? And so over a period of time, I just really started to get depressed and really started to get, give up. I stopped going outside. I became very reclusive. And I just lost all my friends. Uh, my life was really on a downhill spiral. And so one day, after a, a particularly bad experience, I was on an airplane, and the plane ran out of seatbelt extensions. They had to delay the flight by 45 minutes uh, because I had a 52-inch waist and they simply didn't make a, the, the seatbelt that size. And so there were people around me and somebody said, I'm going to miss my flight because this guy is so fat. And it really made me feel bad uh, because I'd never been a burden on anybody before. And you know, what was next? Um, was, was I going to end up in managed care having to be over, uh, turned over by six orderlies to use the bathroom? I just got very depressed by that. And the very next day, when I did finally get home late on that airplane flight, the very next day, I'm watching TV, and I saw Bill Clinton on television. And Bill Clinton was being interviewed by Wolf Blitzer. This was in August 2010. And I'll never forget this, because Bill Clinton looked better than I'd ever seen him before in my entire life. His face was oval rather than round. His, uh, the bags under his eyes were gone. He actually looked really good, better than I'd ever seen him. And so Wolf stopped the interview at some point and said, you know, Mr. President, uh, you've got to tell America what you've done. And he said that his doctors had put him on a plant-based diet. Now, that really got my attention because I had tried every diet ever commercially marketed in the United States. Uh, you name the diet, I had tried it. And I had cycled on and off Atkins for about oh, 20 years at that point, and I'd always been able to lose 40 or 50 pounds, but then I would backslide and I would gain it all back and I'd feel 
such shame because I kept failing and what was the matter with me that I couldn't, I couldn't do better. And I didn't know what was the matter with me because I seemed to be eating the same thing that everybody else was eating. And I just, but I just kept getting bigger and bigger. And in my medical appointments, I'd go to these appointments and the doctor would always uh, mumble something about needing diet and exercise at the end. And I always just assumed that he meant diet with extra fries. And so that's pretty much the diet that I followed. So after I saw Bill Clinton, I mean, because I'd been on every diet, like I said, like, has anybody ever been on Nutrisystem? Yeah, they send you a box of food in the mail. So I got my box and I ate the box in three days. And so I called the 800 number and I said, how long was that box supposed to last? And they said, 30 days. And I said, you, I said, you better send me 10 more boxes. So I started calling around and just really dialing everybody because I was really, I loved using Google and I was good at research and I started calling around everybody and I finally found a doctor and I asked her, do you know what this Clinton plant-based diet is? I tried to Google it and Google came up with no search results found. True story, August 2010, you do that same search now, you're going to get 30 million hits. And so she said, not only did she, follow, did she know what that diet was, but she practiced it herself. And if I would like to come and consult with her on that, she would love to see me. So I did. And so this is the doctor that I consulted with. Now, I'd like to point out to everybody in this room that I do about uh, two to three dozen motivational speeches per year. And each one of these speeches, I show the, her photo with her contact information. And at the end of my presentation, I'm going to just, on my final slide, I'm going to go over how you can possibly get somebody to do that for you also. So listen up. So at, at our, and it's, Dr. Preeti is going to tell exactly why that what she did, but what the big difference was, rather than spend five minutes with me and push me out the door, she spent over an hour with me on an initial consultation. Really got me to admit every embarrassing thing that I'd ever done in my life got me to admit that I'd stopped going outside. I really had no friends anymore. I hadn't been on a date in 15 years. And, you know, because I had ED and I was so obese, I was very ashamed about that. And that's why probably I just stayed inside. And so at the end of our, at the end of our meeting, rather than, rather than just give me some more prescriptions and send me out the door, she prescribed two things that I thought were very unusual. The first one was a whole food plant-based diet. And it wasn't just advice. She gave me the shopping lists and the recipes and everything and said that what we're going to do is we're going to meet on a weekly basis going forward. And as we meet on this weekly basis, we're going to fine tune your program, what works, what doesn't. And she said, the second thing is, I'm prescribing a dog from your local shelter. I want you to go out and adopt a dog. And I, I was shocked by that. I'd never heard of anything like that before. So I said, I'd never had a pet before, Dr. Preeti. And I said, is it okay if I get a cat instead? Because that seemed like less work. And she said, have you ever walked a cat? And I said, no, but I think I've seen it done on TV. And so she just looked, glared at me very seriously and told me to go get a cat, So I mean a dog. So I said, yes, ma'am. And I went home, and the first thing I did was I went to the Safeways, and I filled the, uh, the order to fill my pantry and the shopping list and everything. And the first thing that I did that night was I set off the fire alarm in my apartment building because I didn't know how to cook. I didn't know that rice and beans make that much smoke. Because <laughs> all I knew how to do was boil water and use a microwave. It was crazy. And so I figured that out, and I did actually scrape that, and I had some very crispy rice and beans that night. And so the very next day, I did call uh, Humane Society of Silicon Valley, which was the largest local shelter in my area. And the lady answered the phone, and I said, I'd like to adopt an obese, middle-aged dog <laughs> so we have something in common. <laughs> and they said, we have the perfect dog for you. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, the perfect dog for me, that's a dog that is attractive and like little, little, and it has golden curls and it smiles and it will never ever in the history of the dog pee or poop in my apartment. <laughs> so I headed down there and they talked to me and they made it very clear that they could not show me an animal until I first committed that that animal would be part of my family and this was no take backs, this was, this animal is part of your family for the rest of your life. And I said, yes ma'am, to the intake coordinator, just like I did to Dr. Preeti. So I'm sitting in this 
reception room waiting to meet my perfect dog with his visions of this eight pound golden retriever <laughs> the impossible dog right going through my mind and I'm sitting there and I hear Godzilla walking down the hall <laughs> clump 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 and it sounded like somebody was about to do a fight over Tokyo it really did there was heavy breath and wheezing and all these noises and in this room, I'm sitting in there, and in this room walks the saddest, most obese dog in the poorest condition that I'd ever seen. This dog had, his, he had clumps of hair fall out, missing, his patches of skin visible, his skin was red, his head was hung low, his shoulders were slumped, and I, I looked at him and I said, well, where's my dog? <laughs> and as soon as I said that, he looked up at me, and I could tell that he was clearly more disappointed in me than I was in him. <laughs> and so she re reconfirmed that, you know, well, I mean, can you, do you know a more perfect dog for you here? And I said, no, I don't. <laughs> the best closing technique I'd ever seen in any sales situation in my life, and I've been in professional sales for 30 years, was, and, and if you don't take him, he was surrendered for early euthanasia. I said, okay, he's coming home with me. And so that was him when he was looking at me disappointed. And this was, we got back to my apartment and we looked at each other skeptically from opposite sides of the room for about three days. But we did start walking because part of my prescription from Dr. Pre Preeti was to walk for at least a half an hour twice a day. And the first day we got about 100 yards and we were just completely out of wind and we had to relax. And then, but after, on the third night, he jumped up in bed with me, and I still don't know how he did it because he's so big and in such poor shape. He jumped up on bed with me and he put his head on my chest. And we therefore developed the strongest bond of brotherhood and the greatest sense of unconditional love that I'd ever experienced in my entire life. It was just extraordinary. And so he loved me so much he treated me like I was the greatest person who ever walked the planet. So I resolved that no matter what I was going to do, I was going to get through this because if anything happened to me, nobody else was going to take him. <laughs> and he treated me so well, I decided that I wanted to become the person who he thought that I was. And that's when I started my journey. So we did everything. I learned how to cook. I took cooking classes and I learned that these are actually things that I learned how to make myself and I actually eat. Yeah. So I learned how to make these things and eat. In 10 months, we started losing, I started losing five pounds a week. Petey was losing weight. And in 10 months, my A1C had gone from 12.5 to 4.9. My weight had gone from 340 to 180 pounds. I had, was on zero meds and my life had completely changed. But the, at the end of this time, I asked, I said, you know, I've got all this energy. You know, what do I do next? I, I, I just, I have so much energy. But of all the stats that Dr. Preeti is going to tell you about, this is the one that I cared about. <laughs> my, my testosterone increased fourfold. And I was eating a pound of tofu a day. And I did not develop man boobs. <laughs> Petey lost 25 pounds and became just the happiest, cutest, most lovable dog. We walked, we, there was this, this farm park near where we lived in San Jose, and there was this mile path around it, and it was kind of like a singles park where, you know, people walk their dogs and hope to, like, meet each other and hook up. So, so Petey became my weapon of mass seduction. <laughs> and any time that anybody ever says, well, people, animals eat animals, so people should eat animals too, my response is, well, you know, if I put a bowl of water on the floor next to the toilet, my dog would still lift the lid on the toilet to drink from the, the, the thing. So should we really be like animals or should we aspire to be greater? <laughs> and so you could see that he became a very happy and loving dog. And unfortunately, through our journey, we did so many wonderful things. We went, to, uh, we went on a boat to Alcatraz and he actually peed on Al Capone's cell. And we went to the top of the Space Needle in Seattle, and we just had so many wonderful adventures, but he eventually died. And when he did, I need to read to you from um, what I wrote two days after he passed away. 
Uh, to Petey, I never knew what love was until you showed me the true meaning of unconditional love. I never knew what friendship was or cared about anyone but myself until you showed me the true meaning of selflessness. I never knew what responsibility was until you became responsible for me. I'm a better man in every aspect of my life because of what you taught me. Wait for me at the bridge on the riverbank. Be a good boy, play in the grass and the flowers, and when you see me next, we'll cross the bridge together into our next life. I love you so much and will remember you every day for the rest of my life. That went viral, and I was contacted by Oprah Magazine, and I asked, was asked to write a, uh, an, uh, a little short thing about that, and I did, and it was published in Oprah Magazine, and various things started happening. I, I was really missed Petey, and I really, really missed him with all my heart, but I talked to somebody who said that you'll never fill the hole in your heart until you adopt a new dog, so I did, and I met this character at Seattle Humane. And I, I, I named him Jackpot at first because he acted like he won the lottery. <laughs> and we began doing th various things. We began running together. And this is him uh, completing a, uh, a trail marathon in the Washington Mountains with me. But the most amazing thing that was happening was I was asked to help make a short internet film, a seven-minute internet film. And I did about our experience. And I have the uh, URL right there. And it got 100 million views in a couple of months, and it was extraordinary. It completely changed my life. I got thousands and tens of thousands of emails a day. People were uh, contacting me. I got 12 unsolicited marriage proposals. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I was on several national TV programs. This is me with Bob Harper, and I have the URL here. I'm, I'm short on time. but. He's, his segment was on keto, and mine was on whole food plant-based nutrition. And two months after this, he had a widow maker, and at this session, I said, Bob, how's your heart health? And he said he thought it was good. And I said, I hope it is, Bob. And now he is the spokesperson for Berlinta. So I, you know, I kind of felt that Big Broccoli let me down after not getting a gig like that, but it was good news because I did get a, an agent and a book deal, and just briefly, the book now is in eight languages worldwide. If you'd like me to sign a copy for you, I'd be happy to do that at the PCRM uh, book table afterwards. But when you get, the book is in all these languages, and the most interesting thing to me is that when a book is translated, not only do they translate the text, but they translate the pictures also. <laughs> that's, that's what Petey looks like in Italian. And it, <laughs> in French, he has a beret. And in Russian, he looks like a pit bull. <laughs> I was in the, got an eight-page spread in uh, last month's Reader's Digest, uh, which was, I mean, wow. And I want to tell you the most important part of my story, because I'm, I'm really running out on time. As part of all this noise and all these people contacting me, you remember the, the, the woman, the, the girl in the first slide, Jay, my high school sweetheart? She got in touch with me and said, you know, what are you doing? And I said, and we turned out both to be single, and we started talking, and, you know, we said, why don't we get back together? And she said, great. And she said, I don't think you're going to like me because I put on a lot of weight since high school. She's now 200 pounds, size 20. And I said, well, I'm going to tell you what Dr. Preeti told, to me, told me. I said, if you do exactly what I tell you to do, I believe that in 10 months, or in a year or less, you'll be at your ideal weight and off all of your medications. So just by practicing, by veganizing all of her Italian family recipes and by practicing the same whole food plant-based diet that I did, that's exactly what happened. She went from, si from 200 pounds to 115, size 20 to size 2 in 10 months, and doesn't she look prettier than when she was 16? <laughs> we are living... We're totally in love, living a fairy tale, happily ever after existence, and it's all because a doctor took time to help me and explain what plant-based nutrition was all about and to believe in me to the extent and give me the, the ability to really pull this through. So um, I did start running extensively, uh, just a little bit, and just because I'm running out of time here, I want to go over the fact that... Uh, I, I really started uh, uh, figuring out I was a middle-of-the-pack runner, and I really had a dream. I want to qualify for the Boston Marathon. And so 
I came and I talked to uh, one of the uh, dietitians at Bernard Medical Center and also uh, one of the doctors, and we really fine-tuned my game. And in January this year, I needed, I'm 60 years old, I needed a three hour and 50 minute to qualify for the Boston Marathon. I ran a 336. And to validate that, I did it two more times over the next two months. Thank you, thank you so much.